Meantime, the latest New York Fed consumer survey showing a slight but not super meaningful slowdown in spending. It shows monthly household spending edged down to 4.6% growth in April from 5% in December. Still, that's well above pre-pandemic levels. And my next two guests share the survey sentiment, saying the consumer is holding up even and maybe especially on the low end, but they differ slightly on the timeline of rate cuts. And one says... There's even a case to be made for a rate hike instead this year. Joining us now is Michael Landsberg, Chief Investment Officer at Landsberg Bennett Private Wealth Management, and Aditya Bave, Senior U.S. Economist at B of A Securities, of course, along with our very own CNBC Chief Economics Reporter, Steve Fleisman. Welcome to you all. Michael, you're the hawk here. Uh, even though you're an investment guy, I I'm just going to call you that. Why do you think we shouldn't rule out the, the uh, possibility of a rate hike? And it doesn't sound like you're that worried about it. Well, and I, I think the idea, Kelly, is I think if Powell didn't say that we'd see cuts in 24, we wouldn't be having these discussions. I mean, uh, earnings growth is up 8% year over year in the S&P, over 20% um, in NASDAQ. Um, you know, labor's strong. We're even seeing, you know, meme stocks and IPOs back. There's certainly, you know, all-time highs in the equity markets. There's not really a, 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 a lack of animal spirits here. So I just don't really see why we need to cut rates to get more speculation in this market. I think the market's doing fine without it. it well, and to your point, you know, it's a kind of a nice position to be in, right? Oh, the economy didn't crack. Uh, I guess the nicer position would be the economy doesn't crack, but inflation comes down more quickly. Then they can cut and kind of, I guess, underpin further positive developments. Yeah, I just don't see that. I, I think what we're seeing is inflation's accelerating. Um, I, you know, core, core services are up over 5%. Ex shelter, throw in shelter, it was up nearly six. Um, and if you just look at what Dom talked about earlier, it's all commodity prices seem to be making 52 week or all time highs copper, uranium, gold, silver. Um, I just don't see a, a slowdown here in terms of that. And, you know, when you look at China coming online and now Europe out of the recession, there's a lot of demand for natural resources. I think prices go higher. Yeah, you, and you're buying in that those asset classes to benefit from higher inflation rates. You've got stocks in energy, mining, materials, insurance, crude oil, copper, gold, ag, tidewater, progressive, CRH are all names you're looking at. Do you, you still think we could have a cut in December? Is that right? Yes, I think that's correct. And the rationale there would be that the mix of inflation hopefully looks more favorable by December with slower inflation and in services perhaps offset by a little bit of a pickup in goods de inflation. But by that, I mean less deflation in goods. So going from, let's say, a negative 2 3% rate on core goods, which we know isn't really sustainable, to, let's say, negative 1. But the key for the Fed is services. I would disagree a little bit with Michael. I don't think core services inflation is accelerating. I would say it has been stickier than expected. It's still very elevated from the Fed's perspective, and you're seeing evidence that some of that is being driven by demand, which is why we think for now cuts are off the table. The risks to our December call are definitely for a delay, but for now we remain comfortable with the idea that services inflation will be low enough by December that they can cut. Adia, why is it, as you say, you have a pretty upbeat view on the U.S. consumer, kind of echo echoing Michael here, and you, you do note that it's at odds with many of the concerns raised by consumer names during Q1 earnings. Do you think then these are companies that are not executing well, or what, what is the macro takeaway from that choppiness we've witnessed? I think the macro takeaway is that the stock market is more skewed towards the good sector than the overall macro economy. So there's a difference between macro and markets. If you look at the firms that have reported negative earnings, for example, some of them were in food services, right? For sure, food services was down 2.7% on a real basis in the first quarter, but it's only about 6% of consumer spending. So it doesn't break the back of the consumer, right? So there may be some components of consumer spending that are weak, there always are, but broadly, the consumer is holding up just fine. And importantly, it's not just that supply conditions continue to ease, but also that uh, demand seems to be holding up pretty well.